So first, let's talk a little bit about EC versus PPM. EC is a measure of the electrical conductivity. And if you have an EC or a PPM or a TDS or what's just called a quality, or water quality meter, what it's measuring is EC. It's got a little probe, two little electrical probes. It's passing an electrical current through the water and it's measuring sort of how easy that current flows through the water. Um, what, why that's important is, well, a few things, but it, that tells you how many sort of dissolved solids are in the water. If there's no dissolved solids in the water, then, you know, it's very hard to pass an electrical current through water. But if you have a chock full of calcium, then it's pretty easy to pass a current through the water. So the EC reading tells you sort of how salty, because all those things that are dissolved in the water, we can just consider them and, and think about them as being salts. Okay, so... It's basically telling you how salty the water is. Now, PPM is parts per million. And parts per million tries to tell you how many sort of parts per million in this water are, are different things. So, for example, how many parts of calcium and phosphorus and iron and potassium and sodium like are in this. Now what a PPM meter does is it measures the electrical conductivity and then using a formula, it says, okay, if the electrical conductivity is this, then I assume so much of this water, so much of that is coming from calcium because in most water, in most places around the world, the bulk of the electrical conductivity comes from calcium. Calcium is a double charged cation. So it has sort of a, a bigger impact on electrical conductivity than on PPM. Each unit of calcium is only one PPM, but has a double charge. So if you have one unit of calcium and one unit of sodium, you, you know, you're gonna have, your PPM would be maybe two out of a million. Right. Um, but your electrical conductivity is going to be higher because of that calcium being one of the two. So in order to make an estimate about sort of how many how much stuff is in the water, all we know is how easy it is to pass electricity through it. How much stuff is in the water? It, you know, there's different formulas for for figuring that out. And this is why we have different PPM scales in Europe there's less calcium in the water than there is in the Americas in general. So when you're making an estimate about from electrical conductivity to parts per million, you're gonna assume that sort of, there must be more other stuff because I think there's a little bit smaller ratio of calcium. And, and that gives them sort of the scale, the 700 PPM scale. In the United States, where calcium is, is, tends to be in larger proportion throughout the Americas, calcium tends to be in larger proportion, we use 500 scale. And it's just a, a different formula for going from, you know, what the meter's measuring is the electrical conductivity to like different assumptions about what must be in that water to arrive at a guess. And it's really just a guess about what that PPM is. So if you have a PPM meter, your meter is measuring electrical conductivity and then using a formula to guess what the actual PPM is. There's another way we can approach coming out PPM, right? Where we could like get a, a, a scale and, you know, dry nutrients and we can actually weigh out and, and know exactly sort of how many parts calcium and how many parts phosphorus and how many parts you know, everything that, that we put in the water and we could describe that. And, you know, you can reverse engineer this if you get good information from your nutrient companies in terms of what your PPM actually is. And from that angle, we think about PPM in terms of dosing, like how many parts per million do we want of calcium? How many parts per million do we want of phosphorus? How many parts per million do we want? And I think when we're thinking in terms of parts per million, like people tend to think about it in terms of all these different nutrients and like, 
you know, that's one thing that I often get from people is like, well, why does the PPM matter? Doesn't it matter like what the PPM of nitrogen and, and phosphorus and, and, you know, potassium is? Why do I just need one number that describes all of that? And, and that's a damn good point. We don't need one PPM number. And that's, that's not why we're measuring EC. Now, if all you have is a PPM meter, you can basically sort of crib off of that because what your meter is actually measuring is EC anyways, right? But what we're doing this for and why we measure it has nothing to do with making sure there's enough nitrogen and enough phosphorus and enough potassium and enough calcium and, and making sure those dosages are right. We never use electrical conductivity to measure dose of specific nutrients. We measure electrical conductivity to understand the overall salinity of the water. Because the overall salinity of the water, it affects the plant's ability to get water, not the plant's ability to get nitrogen and phosphorus and calcium. Like we basically assume all that's there because I followed a recipe and I'm using like reputable nutrients, right? So the ratios better be there based on the products that you're using. But if you provide too much of them and you're giving your plant the, this water that's then really salty, the plant will not be able to get the water. So we need to be able to keep the, the sort of overall electrical conductivity in a range where the plant A, sort of is trained for it and B, expects it. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.